Welcome back. Last time on Sailing Joy, we did part of the Les Sables de Lone in France where we spent 10 awesome days. And we crossed the Bay of Biscay towards La Coruña, Spain. And tonight is our second night crossing the Bay of Biscay. Uh, the first 24 hours, uh, I think the first 12 hours, we had uh, seas of maybe a meter and a half uh, of waves and uh, the wind was constant at 15, 20 knots. So we were, we were doing very good in terms of speed. We were doing about nine uh, knots, which was like terrific. We thought we were gonna get to La Coruña in like two days and uh, a couple of hours. What happened was, there's no wind on the second night. So I'm here on my shift, it's 3 a.m. And uh, we have a beautiful full moon today and uh, pretty much no wind. So uh, I know it's a sailing catamaran, we should be sailing, but whenever there is no wind, we go for our engines. So we have one of the engines on, we have the port side engine on tonight. And, uh, and we're doing about 5.5 knots. That will take us to La Coruña in probably 24 hours, uh, making this cross a total of three days. Bay of Biscay is notorious to have like bad weather and uh, really some uh, nightmare stories. Last time that I crossed Bay of Biscay was pretty good, it was not that bad. And this time around has been even easier. Uh, again, we have to respect, we have to make sure that we plan accordingly in terms of the weather and so on. And I think we chose it, you know, the right window. But uh, for Patricia being the first uh, of her crossings, I really wanted to make sure this was an easy one. And, uh, and she's doing great. She's having a good time. The first 12 hours was kind of rough on everybody. Uh, people got a little bit of seasick, nothing bad. But just that, uh, that initial motion in the first 12 hours kind of rough because of the sea state and the wind. But uh, now every, everybody's feeling great and uh, the morale of the crew is up. And in the next 24 hours, we arrive in Spain in La Coruña. Today, let's talk about some of the issues we had on the crossing, things that broke down and how we're fixing it. I will tell you guys what are my thoughts about some of the aftermarket items we bought and as a bonus I will share some areas of attention and improvement for the Lagoon 46. I hope you enjoyed this video. Good morning guys, we are here in La Coruña and today's day to do some projects uh, that we have to do here at Joy since uh, we got some lines that got shaved during the crossing of Bay of Biscay. So uh, the first project that we're going to be doing here is to replace the main halyard line that got shaved by the top lift. So there are two things that we're going to be doing. First, we're going to be uh, rounding up the top lift just in case the line touches that top lift again, it doesn't get shaved. It was cutting like a knife. So. Uh, you know, making it round the borders uh, whenever the line uh, touches that top lift is gonna prevent that from shaping first. So second, we're gonna replace the line, uh, the main halyard line, because it got shaped and kind of destroyed. So since we're gonna be uh, moving that line, we're gonna be using Dyneema uh, as a replacement. There's actually not a need to use Dyneema here on the on the main halyard, but um, I believe it's gonna be better uh, to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. First, it's gonna, you know, the cable is much more resistant. Second, the diameter of the Dyneema is a little bit, uh, uh, it's not as thick, so I think this is gonna be good. It's lighter, it doesn't soak on water, so there are many advantages. It's just like, it's a little bit more expensive than the other one. So uh, in order to do that, we had to splice the end. Uh, so that's what we have done uh, yesterday. So this is what's gonna be going at the top of the mast. And, uh, and we're gonna be uh, replacing the shackle that got loose during the uh, crossing uh, of the Abyssin. So what we're doing here is trying to do a fix. So applying this fix here will prevent the shaping from uh, the line. We're also gonna be doing an extension of the how it's holding in the top of the mast 
So it was necessary to go up the mast to try to better understand the source of the main halyard chafing. What we found out was that the top lift cart was the one cutting the main halyard, since it did have some live corners to it. So here's the part that we made it round, so as you can see it doesn't cut anything, it's very smooth. And this is how it was, actually here is how it was, it was really, it's like a knife. If I do like this with my finger, it will cut to my finger. So you better understand, this is a system designed by Incident Sail to Lagoon to lift the square top type of sail. This is an issue frequently presented on lagoons with square top sail. It certainly requires some adjustments to prevent the situation to happen. We noticed here at the marina, we are in La Coruña already and uh, we're having you know, a uh, wind coming from that direction, straight from the back of the boat, uh, getting to up to 30 knots, 35 knots tops, and we noticed that the guys from Robin Marine simply forgot uh, to put the screws right over there in the middle of the panels in the back. So uh, the air was coming from the from the uh, back of the panel and lifting. It was uh, if I was not here, probably it would just rip them apart and totally destroy it. So uh, yeah, uh, they should pay a little bit more attention uh, to details because this is the type of thing that will totally destroy a good work that they have done in the past. So uh, right here, uh, you have bolts uh, to, the, to the panels, but here in the middle, they simply forgot to put the bolts. So those uh, solar panels were lifting up here in the back, almost got ripped off. So we did like an easy fix here real quick so we can have it bolted tomorrow. And after lunch, we continue to check items off our to-do list. And one aftermarket upgrade I'm looking forward to test is the upgraded Rockna 40 kilos anchor. And here you will see the mantle swivel we bought to attach the chain and anchor in order to avoid the chain to get twisted when the boat moves at anchor. We certainly did spend some good portion of our time attending and fixing some of the issues we encountered at Joy, but we also found some time to go out and explore La Coruña and its surroundings. Lots of story in Galicia. One place that we loved visiting was Santiago de Compostela, which was about 30 minutes from La Coruña. Just great to see the Pellegrinos arriving there after walking the path for several hundred kilometers in days.
6.20 a.m. Uh, we are right in front of Cabo Finisterre uh, here in Spain and uh, we have about 12 hours to go to get to Vigo and uh, our trip so far has been pretty good here uh, from La Coruña to Vigo so we believe we're gonna arrive probably at 1 p.m. I'm finalizing my my shift here it's um, 6.20 so um, it has been pretty good uh, the winds are about 15 knots we're sailing away around uh, seven to seven and a half so very calm now it's the only thing that we had uh, noticed was uh, there was a lot of fishing um, there was a lot of fishing boats around and there was one uh, distress call that we have received in the middle of the night um, with um, with a sailboat that got fishing lines caught in their propeller so they were they were like uh, issuing uh, a security and pan pants they're kind of far away from us so we were not able to do anything to help but uh, we had to be uh, pretty much on the watch out the entire time to make sure that we did not catch anything along the way as well Segundo dia de viagem, hoje estou um pouquinho melhor, ontem eu fiquei mal pra caramba, só parte, e hoje eu vou começar esse vídeo decentemente, porque ontem eu tava, ó, uh! <risos> passei tão mal na primeira noite da nossa travessia que não foi legal, mas hoje eu acordei zero bala, mais ou menos, né, e eu quero mostrar um pouquinho pra vocês como que é uma travessia, não digamos que eu seja uma travessia essa hoje, porque é bem curtinha e deixa eu contar a história pra vocês até me segurando aqui na pique, tá balançando um pouquinho ontem nós saímos de La Corunha, que fica aqui na Espanha e agora a gente está indo sentido Vigo então de La Corunha até Vigo, são mais ou menos umas 110 milhas náuticas, mais ou menos umas 20 horas, a gente tá quase chegando em Vigo a viagem foi perfeita deu tudo certo o exercício do dia tá pago <risos> Duda vai ficar forte desse jeito. Muito fitness ele. Deixa eu mostrar aqui pra vocês uma coisa que eu achei que ia acontecer muito. Era todas as minhas coisas voarem. Mas o, a Joy, ela é tão estável que ó, ela balança. Mas as coisas nem saem do lugar. Tá tudo aqui. Perfeito. Não caiu nada. chegar aqui em Vigo e hoje a gente vai ficar numa ancoragem que tem aqui que é super Nossa, bonita e bem abrigada ali pertinho daquele monte de barco. Agora estamos baixando as velas. <risos> 